Renewable Energy Biz Leadership Forum. You could see it all across our land. The scaffolding for a new energy economy is being erected. Wind turbines continue to sprout across the landscape at a rapid pace. Engineers are tinkering with the equipment that will perhaps one day capture and forever bury greenhouse gases. Just up the street from here, go up 12th Street and hang a right, is the Department of Energy. There's a former industry consultant there by the name of Matt Rogers who has been pushing out the door close to one point three billion dollars every week to fund energy projects as part of the government's stimulus efforts. And yet, as this new energy arch architecture emerges, there are some major concerns. In three words, Washington is broken. And uh, the way I, I was visualizing it flying into the city is, is you could almost see a, a bell jar over this city with all the air pumped out, and in, into the vacuum has been inserted one issue, health care. And for some reason, this city, uh, perhaps unlike this administration, is incapable of dealing with one major issue at a time. So energy is being neglected. Today, as perhaps never before, the energy sector is looking to Washington for some important answers. Will cap and trade be enacted? Literally tens of billions of dollars of pending investments await that decision and will be pegged to whether Congress decides to finally place a price on carbon. If they do, our energy sector has a full menu of investments to make. And if they don't, they may be forced to be prepared to march in a different direction and a federal bureaucracy, the Environmental Protection Agency, may be giving the marching orders. Other questions abound. Will national renewable standards become the law of the land? Do the administration and Congress intend to truly commit to adequately fund and stick with programs that will spur development of the next generation of nuclear power clean coal, and diverse renewable energy resources. We gather here in Washington at a time when our nation and the energy sector are poised for momentous changes. Much money has to be raised to build a 21st century transmission highway, the smart grid, and diverse new generation technologies. This morning, we will talk about where that money to get much of that work done will come from. And we'll also look at the pain those investments may f inflict on energy users. This afternoon, we will dig deep into whether we are indeed headed towards a nuclear renaissance, the dawn of clean coal, and a true flowering of renewables and efficiency at te technologies. This is day one. We will cap our journey today with a delightful evening celebrating three amazing success stories of leadership and innovation as we recognize Energy Biz Magazine's Utility of the Year, CEO of the Year, and Lifetime Award honoree. To help make the this sessions in the next two days as interesting and st stimulating and useful to each one of you as possible, I've called on three world-class journalists to assist with presenting the themes and moderating the topics. They're John Kerry, the senior correspondent for Bloomberg Business Week based here in Washington. Jim Fallows, the national correspondent for The Atlantic Magazine. I've known Jim going back to the 1990s when he was a, a close follower of what was going on in Japan and the implications of that to the world and U.S. economy. And third, Matthew Wald, who uh, I'm sure you've all read the New York Times, covers energy and business and environmental issues quite closely. I also know, having been in your spot many times at many conferences, that there's a, a tug and an urge for 
possibly checking out early and uh, not staying around for the very last bell. And I'd encourage you to resist that because I think the, the theme of this conference, which is the emerging architecture, that's going to be struck probably um, and clear to you by the very last speaker who I just confirmed this weekend, my hometown congressman, Emmanuel Cleaver of Kansas City. Uh, he is the author of an ambitious effort to use green energy technology, weatherization, efficiency, to rebuild part of a decaying urban core in Kansas City, create jobs, and introduce a lot of the new businesses and technologies we'll be talking about. So please stay with us. To start us off this morning, it's my distinct pleasure to call on representatives of two companies very much in the forefront of efforts to answer the challenges facing our energy sector. Oracle and Accenture are industry leaders. Through their sponsorship, they have helped make our two-day program possible, and I want to thank both of them. Oracle has 370,000 customers, including 100 of the Fortune 100 in more than 145 countries. Accenture's clients include 99 of the Fortune Global 100 and more than three quarters of the Fortune Global 500. My first question as a journalist is, I don't know if these lists are exactly analogous, but if they are, I would think Accenture might want to huddle with Oracle and see who that one client is that they're waiting to capture. <laughs> Two years ago, I had the opportunity to listen to Lord Brown, chairman of Accenture's Energy Advisory Board and former CEO of BP at an Accenture executive treat. Talking about the energy sector, he said, quote, the roles of all the players are changing. The roles of all the players are changing. Close quote. The transition will be turbulent. That is what this conference is really all about, navigating the turbulence. You may have heard that BMW Oracle fielded a yacht that won the America's Cup early last month. Here's how the New York Times described it. The monster black and white trimaran and its radical 223-foot wing sail powered the craft at three times the speed of wind. Now, if anybody from Vestas, GE, or Siemens is in the audience, they may want to talk to Oracle about some of the wind technology that helped drive that craft. And uh, 223 feet, that's about the size of some of these turbines, blades. That huge, powerful yacht that sailed to victory off Valencia, Spain, reminds us of the importance of powerful technology, vision, passion, and dedication. Let's keep that in mind as we explore the problems and opportunities before us. It's my pleasure to call on Stefan Scholl, Oracle's Senior Vice President and General Manager working in Tax and Utilities Global Business Unit. His focus is on helping utilities prepare for smart grid and smart metering initiatives that enhance efficiency. In addition, he works to provide critical intelligence metrics that can help drive more informed energy usage storage decisions for consumers and businesses. He joined Oracle in 2005. He's going to be followed by Linda Jackman, the Group Vice President of Product Strategy and Management for for Oracle's Utilities Global Business Unit. She has 20 years of experience in information systems, specializing in capital intensive industries, she, and she's worked all over the world. To, today, she directs a, a team of product managers in the mission critical applications for utilities at Oracle. Stefan. <laughs> 